The following is a special Fan Expo Boston 2022 review. Sega's Bonanza Brothers on Genesis, circa 1991, a direct port of its original arcade parent. So here's how the premise goes. Two bumbling thieves, Robo and Mobo, aka Mike and Spike, are summoned by the police chief of Badville on account of their countless exploits throughout the town in which they operate. The chief's been in the rather intense crossfire of a losing battle between the owners of both the city's casino and mints, and is thus unable to do jack shit to frame them without any hard fucking evidence whatsoever. Therefore, the two intend to break into these shady-ass establishments and steal valuable treasures for profit, whilst avoiding getting arrested by the authorities, despite their localized occupations boiling down to investigative security testers, summoned by a frequently robbed businessman to retrieve every target valuable from his properties. In terms of gameplay, it pretty much boils down to a slapstick-style, espionage and heist-themed platformer akin to Atari's Keystone Capers, where you're in control of the titular duo of thieves, if at least one of them in one-player mode, specifically Robo and Mobo, with the latter being assigned to the second player, traipsing through one shady establishment after another, and snatching every target valuable while keeping every douchebag guard and or assailant at bay before reaching the roof exit. Take a single hit from any of them, consider yourself their quote-unquote bottom bitch for life, in which case you're forced to reacquire the loot on your next life. Ditto if you run out of time. What the motherfucking Christ, man? Speaking of which, as the opening demo intro suggested, you're given three minutes to accomplish every heist, so any pointless loafing is ill god motherfucking damn advised. Control-wise, apart from the D-pad forcing Robo and or Mobo to sneak around, a and C are for firing their basic pistols and opening nearby doors, and B's for jumping, all of which can be altered at the options menu beforehand. Shit, you can even slow the guards down by not only incapacitating their alert yet inept asses via the pistol, but also flattening the pricks by slamming the door in their way. And the less I say about those oversized as fuck bombing guards, which for the record take more hits than the others, the better. Stealth is but one of many factors in every heist akin to Konami's Metal Gear, in which case always be on your guard no matter what situation you're in, and never leave any stone unturned. At the very center of the screen is a grid map of your surroundings, indicating all the valuables you have to snatch up, located between the character's UI details and the overall scenery, which I strongly advise against ignoring apart from everything else. Speaking of scenery, there are 10 different buildings and luxury vehicles to infiltrate, namely the company, the millionaire's mansion, the casino, the mint, the underground path with gold bars, the jewelry store, the laboratory, the deluxe liner, the art museum laden with random Sega memorabilia, and finally the pyramid, between which an occasional theatrical-style vaudeville scene is displayed, but only at random intervals. By the way, upon snatching all of the required valuables from every mind-bending maze, it's off to the next destination via the getaway blimp at the roof. The most common complaints about this game mainly stem from finding a discernible path to each target valuable and or the exits while keeping the security forces off your ass. Or even worse, how slightly delayed the controls are when it comes to busting caps on the opposition before the latter does the same. Or in the case of the shielded guards, using riot clubs at close range other than their own firearms, not to mention making flawless ass leaps over their bullets, especially before or after acquiring any valuable, let alone hauling ass for the getaway blimp at the end of each mission. Other than that, why even complain about the straightforward, yet monotonous and mind-raping at times gameplay? 
Regarding Bonanza Brothers Challenge, please refer to what the fuck I mentioned about the common complaints due to the game's few problems since they tie in with this current subject. And also, I'd rather eat an entire lifetime supply of killer whale shit covered in Eric Cartman's cum for hours on end than to repeat myself. <laughs> Alright, alright, that was a rather appalling analogy on my part, so forgive my over-the-top comparison. The only few offensive strategies I'm aware of, by the way, regarding the shielded riot guards, is attacking from either the rear or the sides, with the latter being possible when shifting planes, but never head-on as not only are they armed with shields, but also those aforementioned riot clubs for close-range retaliation apart from the guns. And should any jackass guard, chef, or dog happen to awaken while fending for yourself in terms of accomplishing every heist, just keep incapacitating the fuckers until you reach the next valuable to snatch, or the exit if you've snatched all of them. Should your sense of alertness happen to shit the bed at any given point, prepare to get fucked left and right more often than two random animals in the wild. Like, for example... Fuck! Are you shitting me now? Shit filled Kashant's man! Son of a bitch! But other than that, at least the first five areas are tolerable enough, but don't expect any mercy in the next and last half, cause they'll chew your ass out bite after bite, worse than every tyrannical, diplomatic figure in history, fictional or otherwise. Starting out with three, five, or seven lives, and only four continues, regardless of whom you're playing this shit with, whether alone or with a companion, don't get too discouraged if every break-in mission turns out to be a colossal, if rather inconsequential, clusterfuck due to everything I've taken up so far, and as per usual, take every suggestion to heart throughout these ten capers. Visually, there's this idiosyncratic, eccentric aura that the presentation harbors. For more than just all the distinct and atypical backdrops for all the sting operations in which Robo and Mobo engage, as they evade every plight on behalf of their assailants, namely all the inept guards, chefs, and dogs, all of whom have this Lego-like je ne sais quoi to their animations and portrayals. Not only does this apply in-game, but also during the interstitial vignettes displayed after every third stage, as well as the ending, following that dreadful-ass final pyramid area where there's absolutely no goddamn margin for inadequate missteps whatsoever, all of which are extremely short of bland and unappealing one might express. Shit, even the seizure-inducing briefing sequences during the opening demo and at the start of every stage are at the very least intriguing and straight to the point, notwithstanding how constant the latter occurs. In terms of music and sound, composed and arranged by Koichi Namiki of Thunderblade, Galaxy Force, Super Hangon, Super Monaco GP, Laser Ghost, Eternal Melody, Yukio Genso Kyoku, and Miku Hatsune, Project Diva fame, based on his original arcade soundtrack no less, the accompanying songs are at the very least applicable, off the chain, and up to snuff for every event, not just in game of course. For starters, the title, briefing, and random interstitial themes range from determined to whimsical, and as for the remainder of every other theme, most notably all the in-game tracks, totally fall within the extreme latter description, but at least they're not as redundant to say, uh, I don't know, every motherfucking pop song hook in history, as convincing as the sound effects strive to be, they pretty much fall flat on their face, harder than Chad and Hamilton kicking Brody's ass in Mallrats, or even worse, when Silent Bob's support rope snapped off due to his weight, thereby resulting in his plummeting, with maybe the exception of the whistles when the guards alert their peers of your presence, and the voiceovers of Robo and Mobo when they steal the loot or are accidentally assaulted by the opposition, namely their triumphant chuckles and pain yells respectively. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself. <laughs> Replayability-wise, due entirely to the overall duration a full playthrough will take, what with its ten mind-blowing stages and their combined, roughly estimated half-hour duration, it should turn out to be nothing more than a short, yet harrowing at times, espionage romp for all to embrace. Granted, there isn't much to get out of Bonanza Brothers, let alone its Sega Ages remake on the PS2, both separately in Japan only, and part of the Sega Classics collection, next to Space Harrier, Golden Axe, Columns, Fantasy Zone, The Works. Apart from improving one's strategic approaches, or high score, let alone experimenting with the different difficulty levels, but at least there is that split-screen two-player co-op feature which is about the same, as long as you're aware of what to expect, which, and I'm sure many have seen this coming by now, won't be fucking reiterated even at this juncture. Either way, you'd be as fucking high as a kite to pass up this oft-overlooked classic.
Before I forget, there's three other Japan exclusive puzzle and action titles that are set in the same universe. Tans R, Ichi Dance R, and Sand R, aka Treasure Hunt, which I more than strongly suggest experiencing for yourselves, at least for the sake of curiosity. Henceforth, my final verdict on Bonanza Brothers, it's easy to see why this particular game turned out to be a rather whimsical yet solid title, despite its commonly raved about cons. Case in point, the short time completion, the ill-fated sense of novelty that wears off quicker than Old Spice, and even the plain fact that there was nothing else that made itself stand out from the rest of its competition and or the other Genesis Pure titles, which won't be mentioned for the sake of time. And let's not even get ourselves started with a Thieves long-deserved revival cameo in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing as but one of many ways of catering to other veteran Sega fans like yours truly, apart from the Genesis collections this very game was featured in. But as long as it also caters to those that fancy multi-feature hybrids, in said case stealth and exploration, it should come as no surprise that Bonanza Brothers is, was, and should definitely be a worthy addition to your 16-bit library. So what the hell are you waiting for? Your next goddamn parole hearing? Get your ass out there and search every corner of your surroundings for Bonanza Brothers, worth every buck and then some, hence these prices shown here. And trust me, you'll be thanking your mind in the long run in more fucking ways than one. Until then, this is the one and only Hardcore Retro God proudly signing off. <laughs>